Oh. <laughs> do it, do it. Good morning. Happy Friday. Welcome to Screen Junkies Universe, otherwise known as... Screen Junkies Universe. Ah, uh, he made a joke and then he refused to repeat it. You always refuse to repeat the joke. <laughs> you'll never know. Uh, what happens off camera, you'll never know. <laughs> you'll know a lot of it. I'm Roth Cornett. That's Joe Starr, Mr. Spencer Gilbert, and a very warm welcome once again to Mr. Ed Greer. Thank you for being with us today. Hi, friend. Hello. We have lots to talk about. Mr. Michael Bay doing Lobo. What is going on? Thank Disney God. Disney streaming service. <laughs> fan questions, and then we have a little tease for what you can see from us this weekend, and it is hot. <laughs> All right, Michael Bay. This is be the Hollywood Reporter in talks, circling, doing the things, dancing around, otherwise doing a waltz. Those are all technical terms in Hollywood. Um, is I <laughs> oh, that's cute. Oh, look at that. Michael Bateman. Oh, oh that's, his, that's his high school graduation picture. Oh, look at class of 2000 over there. <laughs> Oh like he's had crow's God. feet since 14. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> cocaine, man. Hell of a drug. Cocaine. Well, speaking of cocaine, he's talking about doing Lobo. Um, and one of the issues is around the budget. I did Lobo in high school. <laughs> <laughs> the studio at Warner Brothers wants to keep the budget down. Not his very favorite thing. Um, the most recent version of the script calls for a $200 million budget, roughly. Um, so he has given notes on the script, but he hasn't said he will definitively direct. First of all, Ed, do you want to set us up and talk a little bit about Lobo? Is this a character you like? Uh, I mean, when you're 14, Lobo is okay. the best, mm -hmm. you know, and I, and I think, uh, it's, it's, it's telling, uh, that it would be DC trying to answer Lobo. I mean, trying to answer uh, Deadpool. Mm -hmm. It would, it would, that makes sense. And also Guardians of the Galaxy. They can mm -hmm. do Guardians because he's like a, he's a dude from a planet where he killed everybody else on the whole planet. Sure. He comes out so of the dope. womb. Yeah, he comes out of the womb as a little uh, bastard uh, Damien type, takes over his whole world, kills everybody, and then goes off in search of adventure on a space motorcycle. By the way, <laughs> that's really alarmingly, and I'm not kidding, similar to Doctor Who. Well, there you go. <laughs> well, it, it's, it's a pastiche of all types of space space stuff. So and and biker culture and '90s extreme yeah. and like Deadpool, yeah. he's like a wisecracking uh, mercenary, like killer for hire. He takes like whatever the biggest contract is, like he'll get the job done mm. with dude. So <laughs> so what do we tude. think about? First of all, I feel like this is not only answering the Deadpool question, but probably the question that DC is trying to sort out right now, which is, hey, we're not just. They're almost trying to be the. This is my guess opposite of Marvel in that they don't just have one cohesive tone. I think this is the direction we're going to see them go in. They're going to be like, we've got this family movie with Shazam and it's really fun. Um, maybe we have this weird 80s noir Joker movie with Joaquin Phoenix. Um, and then we have this Lobo movie with Michael Bay that they're going to open the door and say DC could be anything. You don't know what you're going to get. Like on Screen Junkies News. What do you think, I Michael like this, Bay? I like the Screen Junkies news approach for DC movies, uh, where they just constantly comment on how the show's not holding together. <laughs> <laughs> Sets falling apart. <laughs> J Half the time the sound doesn't work. <laughs> JTE just walks up to a Superman and knocks the mustache off his face in the room. The title's misspelled. <laughs> I think Loba. Man of, sti man of style. <laughs> Got a Superman got a scarf. <laughs> I mean, my, my Michael Bay opinion is not going to be surprising. If this was um, Bad Boys Michael Bay, I'd go, okay, but this is going to be Transformers 12 Michael Bay, um, who I want to old fashioned river strangle. So well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But um, oh, it just means just you <laughs> find like a, a stream or a creek and you just shh. Oh, like in a low, <laughs> shallow water, and yeah. then you drown yeah. them and strangle them yeah. at the and same then, time? Yeah, and then just a guy with like a weird name plays banjo behind you. I yeah. Know, like when he does like a uh, pain and gain, <laughs> um, he, he's capable of doing some lower budget, kind of weirder things. I think this movie has a really, one of the higher ceilings and one of the lower floors of any uh, movie in recent memory. Just because of the subject matter paired with him, it could be so balls to the wall, over the top, and like mm -hmm. embraced in the ridiculousness of it that it would be great. Or he could take it like a little too seriously, or or like kind of take the uh, think the wrong things about Lobo or cool, and uh, and just turn this into one of the most disgusting, awful movies ever made. Name some of the things that he could think are cool that are not the cool things. Oh, just like genocide, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, Michael Bay's, like, like makes the genocide the like, cool part of Lobo. Like and, and, it's the whole first act. Yeah. It's the CGI Lobo <laughs> baby <laughs> eviscerating <laughs> people. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. I'm not gonna get better than that on this story. I will. I want to do an asterisk before the Doctor Who nerds yell at me. Um, that like that's what I'm talking about is the idea of having destroyed your own planet. But then he spends the next several seasons living and working that out emotionally. Um, instead of what was it with Michael Bay? Uh, I believe I was doing a slow ride by Fog <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I mean, I would too. love to see you know Lobo. Lobo. <laughs> <laughs> Make it sleazy. <laughs> 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 For no reason, there's just like space babes riding yeah. on the back of oh, the will be. Oh, oh there will 100% be. Yeah. be. yeah. There definitely Naked will be. Naked space babes. They will have all washed Michael salt? Bay's car. Oh, no. If you, oh, yeah. if you could read this, the bitch fell off in space. <laughs> <laughs> Another bumper sticker in space. <laughs> uh, I think we That might. is 100% <laughs> yeah. 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 I think we're selling the audience. I, know, I think yeah. we're going the wrong way, you guys. Um, Disney streaming service. Speaking of actually a homogenous approach versus, I really think that's what Warner Brothers leaning into now. Like, I think we're going to see the slow dissolution of the United DCEU or whatever the f it is, um, and just these random movies, mm -hmm. which I have to admit. I'm not super into a Michael Bay Lobo, but the idea of just completely tonally distinct, disconnected, cool movies that some may be great and some may be just weird is exciting to me. Yeah, and I do think uh, that fan base would love this movie because much like The Watchmen, Lobo was created as like a response to like mm -hmm. stupid comic book tropes and sort of a deconstruction of what was going on in the 90s. But instead of being like, well done with your satire. People were like, Lobo's so dope! The way that they're like, Watchmen is the shit, and like kind of miss a lot of like the greater points of it. So I think that fan base will still just be like, yeah, Lobo's so dope! Yeah. yeah. It'll do well. <sighs> yeah, this is kind of the Fox approach um, in the sense of like your Logans and your Deadpools, they're tonally completely distinct, yeah. but yeah. They're, they each have their own flavor. And it's like, we know these DC characters by now, although Lobo will probably be an origin story or something like that, um, where like you don't need to set up the backstory of Superman and how he became Superman again. Like we can just tell a new Superman or Batman story, just yeah. dive right in. Well, or we could just have different characters. That might well, be fun. And no, also, just only four. <laughs> that, well, yeah, really. <laughs> but also this whole this whole thing of like letting the filmmaker DC becoming like, well, we're home of the filmmaker. That could be really sweet. That could be a really smart mm -hmm. position for them to take. It's like, we're home with a filmmaker. Hey, David Fincher, you want to do a, a Green Lantern prequel where he doesn't put on the ring until minute 75? Fuck it, we'll do it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I has, think that's nice. That has always supposedly been Warner Brothers' MO. Like, we're right. the home of storytellers. This is where you come make your films. Uh, they haven't quite let their. Well, they have, but the only that. filmmaker has been Zack Snyder. Zach, exactly. Yeah. exactly. They let him do whatever well, he wants. Well, Nolan yeah. before that. I mean, the interesting thing is when. I do think that they decided to be the anti-Marvel in certain ways, and that was the idea was we will be the dark one and they will be the funny one, which is weird given historically in the comics, like not the case. Um, well, and well, that's DC's why it eventually the, didn't work. Oh, yeah. Not, Good. Marvel's for kids. <laughs> DC's yeah. for thinking well, adults. DC's, <laughs> DC's tone has always been weird to me because when I was a little kid, it was like they were the only ones that would say damn, but then they would make you have to look at Shazam. You know right. what I mean? Or, or Billy Batson, like, oh, this little kid, he's a superhero, and this guy with a green ring that, you know, wood and yellow can stop, and all this kind of jazz. But then they would say, damn, or they'd have a murder, and Batman had to be really, you know what I mean? Whereas Marvel was more uh, fun and kitty, but at least they, you know, when they did their Marvel Universe, they had science behind all the characters, like, this character could lift 10 tons, this character could lift 5 tons. In the, Took in the place in New York. Exactly. You know, or it, real places. It was grounded. So it was kiddie, but grounded, whereas DC was mythic and tr trying to be mature, but the myth, the mythic nature of it was sort of juvenile. Mm. Yeah. If that makes Not sense. Not yellow. Yeah. I have no horse in this race at all. Like, my horse is let's make weird movies. And Your dark horse comes <laughs> <laughs> You know what? <laughs> Vertigo. Vertigo. Oh, okay. Yeah. Whoa. Why not? These are. This is my my trajectory. Archie Vertigo. That's where it goes. <laughs> That's where she lives. Right there. Right in that. That's a good right address. That sweet yeah. spot. Yeah. That's um, a good block to live on. Thank you. You're I welcome. appreciate that. Yeah. No. I'm just for like do the thing that makes sense. Do the. I do think that the Logan Deadpool approach worked for Fox better than trying to constantly unify the X Men and make them something. Uh, perhaps they are not. Story two for us today is about Disney and their streaming service, which it does look like they are gonna make more of a Disney approach in it. So they're not really, they've released kind of a mini slate 
for the upcoming streaming service. Um, this is via Slash Film. And so things like we already know that the Defenders and things like that are going to remain on Netflix for now. Um, and they are also, quote, aiming to have Hulu be a dumping ground for anything that doesn't fit uh, into geez. the Ouch. squeaky clean, quote, squeaky clean image. This is, again, this is not me saying this necessarily. There are multiple Star Wars TV shows in development, which may cost over $100 million. That's to kind of reel you into that streaming service. Mm -hmm. But it looks like anything, you know, they're going to be leaning into the camp rocks and things like that. And anything that's more of an R-rated nature, a more adult nature, if you will, uh, will not go there, which is kind of an odd thing to do for a streaming service that needs a lot of humans to subscribe to it. I'm not sure about this approach. It's coming in fall 2019, so we will find out. Um, there are plans for a new live action Marvel series, among other things, and then a series of films as well. Uh, it does not have a lot a name yet. Everyone's calling it the Disney Vault for now. Mm -hmm. um, is it enough which to just, name, which would be a That's great name. <laughs> Is it enough to sort of have and Walt's frozen all, head? Yeah, <laughs> just alive, just talking to you yeah, yeah. every time you log on, it has a new inspirational message for or you. He's like, uh, the, like uh, he's like a clippy that pops up to suggest what you should watch. Yeah, uh, yeah just his frozen yeah, head. Like, yeah. have you seen Song of the South? <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my favorites. <laughs> and some technician is like, we've lost control of him again. <laughs> It's like, it's like uh, do you want to watch Yentl? No, you don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wookiees and Millennium Falcons, get out of here. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think this is um, too risky. I think that the limited, seemingly limited amount of content is actually, first of all, not that limited because uh, Disney owns everything. But second of all, <laughs> yeah. I think the appeal Including is that um, when, uh, uh, when you want your kid to shut up, you hand them the iPad, right? And if you hand them the Disney app, you can just like rest assured that they're not gonna like accidentally click on Orange is the New Black thinking it's gonna teach them about colors. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be- Or those it, weird YouTube kid videos. Or those weird yeah. YouTube kid videos. If you have the yeah. Disney service, it's like a closed box, and it's all the Disney shows and the Disney movies, it, that's like kid, that's kid crack right there. Like, yeah. just give it to your kid and tell mm -hmm. them to shut up. They have a, that's a great point. They yeah. uh, let us continue to not parent and yeah. instead let the <laughs> electronics oh, yeah. do it more and more. Um, they have not released a price point for it yet, but you're right. Perhaps if it is all of the family things on one service with no threat that they might land on it, the adult things. And then they'll that peel off a appeal. few man children and women children uh, who are like, oh, Star Wars. <laughs> oh, it won't be a few because I, I, I don't think. Uh, you mentioned sort of the sort of is it a good idea to sort of dump R-rated stuff, stuff that won't fit the tone, dump it on the Hulu, which now in my head looks like the opening of Terminator with just that tank tread rolling over skulls. Uh, that's what Hulu, I guess, is going to look like. I don't think movies like that are going to be nearly as much of a draw as just IP. Um, like right. the older Disney IP, the vault stuff, the yeah. actual vault stuff. Yeah, touchstone stuff, anything yeah. that doesn't fit like the Disney image. That, they got all that Fox stuff there's too a, now. You know, yeah. There's a small percentage of people that are going to, cinephiles and stuff, they're going to be like, where's that? But, three men and a baby, yeah, for example. You know, th you know which, three men and a baby. Which JT has brought up, um, I think, seven times. So we know what he's looking forward yeah. to. <laughs> Slow fade. Just a little bit of, the, is this a little our, bit of selling. Is this our show today, JT? Is that what you're trying to say? Three men and a baby? I think it's, it's weird that everything baby in that like the uh, right. swingers baby. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, uh, it, the, the IP Marvel, Star Wars, that that's you know, there's a small percentage of people that are like, where's my non-IP content? But not enough to impact. carry a service or impact. I also think your point is having been a nanny in my life, like there are those moments that you're like, the love of God, anything mm -hmm. to like. Well, just. Yeah, just just having every single one of those things there, as well as probably new content, like to, really stuff that they don't have to try so hard to produce. It doesn't have to be that good, mm -hmm. and they could dump it on there as well. I think it's a, it's a brilliant move if they if they stick to that. But like trying to make all the comic book stuff live right next to Lady and the Tramp, you know what I mean? I just I I wouldn't like that. I wouldn't like it. I mean, I guess I would. I guess I would. Dude, you I know. sold myself no. in the middle. No. In the middle. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I sold yeah. myself. Yeah. You're going to be like, do I want to watch Age of Ultron again? I haven't seen the second Rescuers in a while. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. I, that's what I envisioned happening in my head. I was like, oh, God, I talked myself into it in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. So bad. Watch, the, watch the last half of Civil War, and then, and then yeah, Song of the South. Yeah. So <laughs> if it's $7. Extended. Which was actually the last half of the Civil War? <laughs> exactly. I don't know. <laughs> If 
seven dollars. What's it gonna take you to oh, subscribe? I, I think that's low for uh, uh, for avoiding uh, being a parent. I, I'd go. No, for you, you don't have kids. Oh, for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. If they have Reminding like a re you a that. reverse, like a like a senior discount, but it starts at like uh, you know fourteen years old. Like if you um, don't have a child, you have to pay right. less. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'd pay seven bucks for it. Sure. Well, I, you know what I would like? If I was them, I would try to market it as an expansion pack on something. Kind of like how they're doing with this Hulu. Mm -hmm. Hulu does this. We do that. I would try to market it as an expansion pack. Like how like people have uh, Showtime. They yeah. have show, Hulu yeah. and yeah. just Showtime. You know, stuff like right. that. Yeah. I would try to do it like that and charge maybe like some weird like four ninety nine, Something mm. weird. You know yeah. what I mean? So that people would go like, oh, come on. I'll, I'll buy that. I'll yeah. just do You that. have Disney Basic, but would yeah. you like Disney Marvel? Ex yeah. Exactly. I did that with Showtime because I wanted to watch one of the things that they had exclusively on exactly. it. And I was like, okay. And then you forget. And then you get your bill. And, that's and, right. and that's when and you seven's low. Remember. I mean, um, it only takes like five months to get off of a recurring charge. <laughs> right, like, yeah, yeah. oh, this sucks. Next um, month. Oh, I've got to remember to do that. 4K Netflix is like $15 a month. And and I those mean, Disney like, vault wise. releases are really yeah. expensive. Yeah. And again, they do potentially also have the Fox library as well to mm -hmm. play with. Um, and it, I don't know. You're right. You guys have sold me on the family friendly <laughs> streaming service yeah. that we seem to be getting. Again, it's not out yet. Perhaps this approach will change, but that seemingly reportedly is the approach at the moment oh the approach they will they will sell you on multiple star wars tv shows in development until six months into you subscribing and they're like here's the one the others don't exist anymore and then you're like well i'm subscribed to disney yeah. oh well. there's no and now way i multiple. forgot yeah. and yeah. now it's just gonna repeat charge me every month and that's how they get you <laughs> um well, columbia I'm, music club i had a question I too i, I was Magic wondering Camp. if the benioff and weiss which we're not going to get into again um at the moment or we can if you guys want to uh thing was actually going to be targeted towards that streaming service and be a big stunt to get people to subscribe out of the gate when it's first launched. But we'll see. Maybe they're actually movies that will be in movie theaters. Mm -hmm. Who knows? We have fan questions, but first we want to offer up some of our family friendly, friendly entertainment. Fanny friendly. Fanny friendly. Well, uh -oh. that's, that's the actual more accurate description. Yeah. Um, our family friendly entertainment right here on screen, Jenny. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. God damn it. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. It's also an accidental, really good segue. It like was, yeah. yeah. Let's you. look at what we have coming up this weekend, shall we? I do have to mention Ooh. that I draw Umbridge with one line in that movie. Yeah. And which is that magna cum laude mm. done fried up your brain because it should have been a summa cum laude. Right. Fair. At least Only a salutatorian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zero yeah. context for you. Zero. Yeah. I'm not even going to tell you what it is. <laughs> but I'm not going to tell you Saturday. what it is. But it comes out on Saturday right here on Screen Junkies. <laughs> Real mature discussion. Yep. Yeah, exactly. You can look forward to mature discussions like that. Also, movie fights happened yesterday, and uh -huh. it was great. And you should watch it. And you yeah. should watch it. Check That's that it. Out. Like You should watch the movie fights. That was a section of movies that are sexier than Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, it was a fun discussion. Yeah. Some commercials end up there and some movies that you might not have thought about as being a sexy film come out of this person's head yeah. in, that, yeah. <laughs> in that discussion so you should check it out. We Number also, seven will blow your mind. <laughs> <laughs> and yesterday you got a surprise Dan. Yeah. You got a surprise Dan in that thing. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Check it out. Check it out. We have fan questions. We'll take a couple of those before we wrap it up today. Um, the first one. It was actually aimed at me and Dan, I'm now realizing as I'm looking at it, uh, that I will answer for myself. Tyler asks, are there any critiques that you would take back, maybe praised a film too highly or were too har harsh? Cough, cough, The Greatest Showman, cough, cough. Tyler, thank you for asking the question. Um, yeah, people were really upset with Dan and I about our review of The Greatest Showman, and I do not take back my opinion. <laughs> I absolutely respect yours, and I realize that we did a whole video about movies that the critics got wrong in the sense of critically, some things, certain things weren't praised at the time, but then they were a huge audience hit. Audiences love this film. They find it joyful. They love the music. They are embracing it. Um, it is doing very well. This thing has legs beyond legs. Um, and certainly there are plenty of films that critics didn't like uh, that I do, uh, but I, that's how I felt about that movie. And I kind of like, it wasn't for me, it is for a lot of other people and that's awesome. Um, but there, having said that, there, I used to agonize over my grades of movies <laughs> when I had to do that, which is why we don't do that here. 
it was like at IGN, it was a scale of one through 10, but with a point decimal system in between. And I would be like, uh, I don't know, is it a 6.8 or a 6.5? <sighs> <laughs> Must quantify art into uh, exact score. Which is the worst, right? <laughs> like, it's so stupid. Like, that's not the interesting way to look at or talk about a movie is whether it's good or bad at all. The most interesting thing to talk about is what did I read from it? What did I get from it? What did I interpret from it that mm. you didn't or did? Can't put that in an algorithm, Ralph. Oh. <laughs> Useless. That's what's, like, even the, we're going to talk about when Black Panther comes out, there's a read on one of the characters that I was talking about with somebody the other day that is, we, we read it so differently, mm. but I loved what he said. Um, and what I said was also brilliant. <laughs> Do you, have you guys regretted your take on anything ever? I'd have to go back through the through the library of takes of hot takes in my life. Uh, nothing springing <laughs> to mind, but like I I say, uh, you know, once a week an honest trailer comes out, and I'm sure we've been too hard on something or too o over the top praising something. I I don't know. Probably probably happens every week. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you, that's the thing about doing opinion, this too. people change, and your opinions change with them. Yeah, I think that's the thing about doing this. Having said that about the Greatest Showman, that's one thing. But what's more interesting and i don't know if you guys know notice this doing this every day for example my take on like a topic may change day to day i may learn more or think about it more and have a slightly different opinion or realize i phrased something in a way that didn't quite capture my opinion um that is more where i change and that's human mm. Well done, Roth. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to change. It's it's really okay to change your mind. Yeah. I think that's what more nerds should get out of this discussion right here in a lot of life. It's okay to change your mind. I used to think a lot of stuff was great, and now I don't. I, I call it the now mind. You know, in my now mind, yeah. I don't think Transformers is dope. In my now mind, such and such. You know what I mean? I, I think of it that way. In my now mind, Jackie Brown is probably my favorite Quentin Tarantino movie, bar none. No discussion. I don't want to hear your hateful like conversation. I, mean, <laughs> you know I, mean? I just like yeah. this this like forty five year old black lady stewardess just beats five gangsters and wins. Oh my god, I'm relating so hard to that. That's my aunt or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I I see that more <laughs> than when I was a kid going, eh, yuck. There's no, there's no you know nobody's talking about royales with cheese. What's up with this crap? You know what I mean? Yeah. I, it's so much better and more full now that I have more experience. So I think more geeks should like change your associations. Maybe you liked Boba Fett a whole bunch when you were 11 because a toy could make you think a character was cool. But now maybe you want some more. And you're entitled to change your opinion. Yeah, and you're entitled to evolve how you, how you think about something. In fact, we probably should do more of that. I mean, some of the more complicated conversations that are happening right now in Hollywood, like my take on a particular topic might be that I see 10 different perspectives at once and they're all true in my mind. I don't have a definitive take or it may change from day to day. Well, also respecting how people, other people see movies too. Mm -hmm. Like I, I definitely understand there's people who think The Dark Knight is serious and it's just perfect and I, I, I think it's the goofiest, dumbest thing ever. Well, and I, yep, hot take. You want that and, on the internet? <laughs> oh, I, I definitely do. We're live, uh, so I, that's I, no, I, I did that out. No, no, I, I know, I definitely do. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like, you know, you, you cut Two-Face you cut two out of there, you got a decent movie, you can, you, you can save, shave 40 minutes off that thing, easy, easy in my opinion. However, I understand when people go, dude, it just blew my mind. I can understand why it did. I didn't like The Revenant that much, but as a filmmaking achievement, that thing is excellent. Sure. You know, think about it, they're, they're lighting this thing by candlelight. They're making CGI, you know, rape bears. You know, they're, <laughs> they're doing all kinds of stuff that's amazing. So, but just because, but, but me personally, to watch Leonardo DiCaprio drudge through the woods and get beat up and have a bunch of coincidences help him, that wasn't a great movie to me. But I could see why people were blown away by the filmmaking challenge of it. I love Casino. There's people who go, I don't like gangster movies. You're never going to tell those people how great Goodfellas is or how great yeah. Casino is. They don't like gangster movies. Take that. Take that and stop talking to them yeah. about that. You know? Hi, I'm Johnny Coincidence, and I'll be your guide through the woods today. <laughs> here's a deer exactly. heart. <laughs> yeah, here's a deer heart I found. I, I like that, and I, I think that, uh, I think one of the cool things about doing this every day is that you do get to, like, evolve and grow, and the conversation can shift and change, and Things can be added or subtracted. Morgan asked creepier, Michael Shannon or Vincent Price? Shannon. 
They're, neither of them are creepy. I love, I love both of them. Yeah. Neither are creepy. Well, I Vince mean, Holy, either. Have a beer with either of those guys. I mean, Vincent Price is Bill Hader's Vincent Price to me now, who is adorable. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> if there was any creep factor in Vincent Price, it's gone now. Well, I mean, uh, if somebody told me that Michael Shannon in 1984 killed somebody at a road stop, I'd be like, that makes sense. Yeah, that, yeah that I get it. You know, yeah. but, but he's also a great actor and a good guy. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? so it's like... You're going with the artist in that case. Who did he kill? Is my question. Is it a Dexter situation? Uh, I was just a drifter, in? man. It yeah. was it was a, it was yeah. a, a momentary drifter. impulse. Like he did I, it to see if he could. Yeah. yeah. Okay. To know what I, it would feel like. Yeah. 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 That one I can't. I can't buy that. I can't <laughs> buy that. <laughs> We're gonna. Tim Butner wants us to talk about Uma Thurman and Quentin Tarantino. So if you guys aren't aware, you should go read the articles that exist, and we'll get Spencer's take in a minute. Um, about this, <laughs> where in which Uma Thurman, I don't know if you remember this, this was on a red carpet last month or the month before, I can't remember when she was on the red carpet, and she was basically saying, when I'm ready to talk about why I'm angry, I will. And then she did an interview in which she she did talk about that. She talked about her dynamic with Harvey Weinstein, but also with Quentin Tarantino, um, and specifically about an accident that she had had on the set of Kill Bill, and sort of uh, how she felt that Quentin was not only irresponsible, but almost that it was aggressive towards her. Mm -hmm. Quentin then wrote a response where he beat by beat addressed what Uma said. He expressed a lot of regret. Um, there's a separate piece out there about Quentin talking about Roman Polanski in an interview from a number of years ago. So this has all been kind of broiling over the next, the last several days. What is your initial take? So I haven't read, uh, uh, in all fairness, I haven't read Quentin's sort of like response to everything. But I think my overall is uh, something you can take out of uh, the gender issues and stuff that we're looking at in Hollywood and the power dynamics is that I can see why those dynamics being what they are, Quentin Tarantino being like, me and her just uh, uh, two peas in a pod, you know, running and making our movies. And, and for that to blind him from the fact that maybe like, spitting on her when she's in a trunk isn't okay or like get in the, just get in the car it's you and me it's you and we're making a movie you know like uh why aren't you holding up your end of the partnership like i can see why a guy might not recognize what he's done that that said you know i'm uncomfortable means i'm uncomfortable you know uh i'm an actor i'm not uh, a driver i'm an actor i'm not a stunt driver um you know uh, if you can, we were talking about it a little bit before the show started, but if you can figure out how to make a crazy 88 walk around in the background for 12 minutes of a scene with no arm and for it just continually spurt blood, you can figure out how to shoot Irma, Irma, Uma, not in that car. You can figure out how to not actually like spit on her. Mm -hmm. Method spitting, man. It's method, it's spitting. method spitting. It's gotta be real. It's gotta be real. Spencer, <laughs> what's your take? Okay, it's gotta be real, okay? Rock, you okay. know I just was talking to you about this before the show that I haven't read anything but the headlines. It sounds like he did a fucked up thing, and then it sounds like he has some sort of response to it. I think I, like most of America, have only read the headlines of the things. And that's <laughs> my entire opinion about it, which is, it sounds pretty fucked up. <laughs> which is why I wanted to call on you, because Thank I you, do Rob. think that most of America forms an opinion. I, I do it too, we all do it. Like we, we're just so inundated with information that I feel like we see a, a snippet of it and then we form an opinion. Yeah, I, I would I would definitely agree with that. And also, I, I think we're really running into the first real generation of us having to deal with what artists do. You know what I mean? Us really knowing exactly what mm -hmm. artists do. Back in the days, it was like, hey, Rita Hayworth said uh, Spencer Tracy did this. And it's like, it's a, it's a campfire tale. Now we got video. Now we got audio. Now we got, you know, in indictments and, you know, all the kind of uh, uh, whatever uh, records of these things. So it becomes more serious through how, how us artists act towards each other and towards people who are our subordinates. You know what I mean? So I think that's why all this stuff is, there's so much furor right now. Yeah. Yeah. They were, I was listening on the radio the other day and they were talking about how this is impacting fine art as well, because do they contextualize who the artist was and how they behaved in their life when you're walking through and looking at the paintings or do they not? And it's kind of like an interesting question that's being asked there as well. Gil, hashtag Vala, Gil Vala asks, with Valentine's Day coming up, what are your non-romance recommendations to watch with a loved one or date? Non-romance. Non-romance. Hmm. Whatever your date would like to watch. 
That's right. Ask them. <laughs> Ask them what they want to watch. Oh, no, yeah. I, I took this question different. I thought it was like, if you want to cock block yourself hard. <laughs> you want to really kill the vibe. <laughs> really? What movie should you watch? <laughs> If you do not want this date to go well, dude. Along those lines, I'll tell you one. I, I took a, I took a, a young lady who we had gone out a bunch of times before. This wasn't new, and we were we had done a bunch of stuff before. It wasn't new, and we went out to go see a nice little movie before we went back to the crib to you know do what we do. And I took her to There Will Be Blood. Mm. <laughs> good movie. And yep, I am good. telling you, that is a that's a everything killer. Yeah. That we, we were just like we shook hands at the end. I don't think I, I don't think I've ever seen her again. <laughs> that movie. It's too yeah. bad you didn't fool around at the end. Go, I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Missed opportunity. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I like romance on Valentine's Day. It called me crazy. Um, but I guess I thought that when Deadpool came out, it was actually a pretty good Valentine's movie because it's actually pretty sweetly romantic. His entire motivation is I, like the hero's entire motivation is I want to get back to my hot girlfriend and the villain's entire motivation is don't call me Francis. Like it's the best. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> Deadpool. Go watch right. Deadpool and enjoy yeah. your Valentine's Day. Uh, but we'll see you before that. Yeah, and we probably. have actual recommendations for things that you can watch that are sexy for Valentine's right. Day. Um, and some of them are really weird. I'm not saying from who. What? <laughs> the, two of the three are classics. <laughs> Mine are probably weirder. <laughs> um, thank well, you for joining us. Well, thank you. I mean, this is always fun. And uh, I always got the hot takes. Hot so, take. Yeah. Hot the hottest take. stuff. And a lot of the humor. <laughs> where, where can everybody find you and follow you? Um, do those at things? Ed Greer Destroys on all social media. Uh, Instagram has a bunch of my art on it. Uh, Deviant Art. I even have a Deviant Art page. Yeah, so Ooh, I nice. do art and stuff. And uh, uh, tonight I'm doing cosplay comedy as a uh, middle aged Luke Cage. Uh, <laughs> and that is going to be epic. That That's going to be epic. Where can people see that? Oh, it's uh, it's at uh, it's in Burbank uh, on Twitter. Look on Twitter. Look you on can check Twitter. my little flyer. If you're if you're local, come down. It'll be a good time. Yep. All right, awesome, Spencer Gilbert. We keep you trapped in right a here. cage. Yep. Writing for us. You Despite got it. All your keep rage. doing that. I'll be here. Joe Star. I just sit next to his cage and kind of hang out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How you doing? And then I come in like every five minutes with some random non sequitur, which they indulge, but are secretly like, we're trying to work. It's been good Please. being with you guys today. Nice Thank you. Happy weekend. Enjoy your weekend. Watch the things. Do the stuff. And we will get more fan questions next week. I like all of this. <laughs> Three men <and> a baby. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>